Hello. This is all highly impromptu. Can you hear me? I assume the answer is yes. I'm feeling that confident at least. Oh, things are still on the floor, but it's all good. I hope you're having a good, what day is it? Monday. It's Monday, right? Yeah, this is Monday night. Okay. I hope you're having a good Monday night. Let me get all, there we go. That looks like a proper up, 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 up. So I thought that it would be fun to just, you know, hang out, chit chat. It's been a few days since posted a vid, have stuff to work on and stuff, but things, things happened. I went to my local comic book store, uh, drum roll, please. I said that I was going to, and I did. Also, it's so hot today. So, so hot. They had a, a heat warning. I, I'm in the attic. The window is open. So you might hear people living their lives. You might see some sweat, but you know, blood, sweat, and tears. That's what goes into casually comics. <laughs> I have two, I have two drinks. I have a water and you can see it's sweating. Look at that. It's sweating. And I have, oh, look at this in the, at the time of this recording mug, check it out. They're here. I have links to the things down below as well. And this one's got orange juice. <laughs> that's, that's how we roll. We got some adult drinks in the house, water and orange juice. <laughs> They're going to keep us hydrated. Okay. So what was the most exciting about this trip to the comic book store was that I brought my daughter and this was her first trip and she picked a thing. I picked a thing for her and then she picked her own thing on top of that. It was a really welcoming space. They had a little children's nook with the little mini children's tables and all of the graphic novels and like the ones that are supposed to be for kids, the, the floppies over there. So she, uh, she didn't pick what I was angling for, which is one of the graphic novels, because, well, you got more bang for your book. But she picked, I, uh, I am allowed to have it, I asked. <laughs> she picked, dun, 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 one of these far out fairy tales, which reminded me very much of, you know, the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons where they did kind of the twisted fairy tales, only these are more wholesome and less sarcastic than those were. This is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and it won because there's a sea monster on the cover and there are skeleton pirates. So it's by Louise Simonson. It was oh, $7.95 Canadian, so probably like 10 bucks. <laughs> and I would at first, you know, I, I cringed the uh the heart, the heart cringed a little bit at the price, but it's been read every single day since we got it. So it is much beloved. And she now wants to get some of the other ones. So that's nice. She wants to go back and pick up some of the other ones that they have in the series. She specifically wants this private eye detective one. So I'm very excited that she's so into it and enjoyed it so much. And it was really sweet. It was just a retelling where instead of, whoa, that like hair went everywhere. It was just a retelling where instead of becoming like a, a beast, becomes like a sea monster and the sea monster is her dad and she needs to like break the spell to free her dad. And it's all about her learning to not be like impetuous and go into situations with a plan. It's, it's wholesome, wholesome family friendly content. So it's very sweet. Let me, let me put it down over here. Let me move it. They also had this, which I've been looking for for a while, which is the, the Oz comics, which I think are super cute. It was in the, the manga section for some reason. I'm not going to quibble though. <laughs> I'm not going to get into a fight first visit. Like, excuse me. <laughs> I don't consider this to be, <laughs> but they have these and I think these are super cute and I think she's going to enjoy these I like these a lot, so I'm hoping that she likes them. But <laughs> these are just like the, um, you know, the Franz Baum stories, but in comic book form with art by Scotty Young. Yeah, look at them. It's cute. Look how cute it is. Look at this. I love these. They had all, um, they had all of the big omnibus collections. So I was like, start with one, calm it down. You want to eat this week, so. <laughs> So, but I think, I think she's going to like this one as well, but I'm going to let her keep reading this as much as she likes. Cause I'm so glad that she's into it and enjoying the reading so much. And then we'll go back and get some of the other ones. 
So what else did I get? I posted on the community tab today, actually, that about uh, manga. I made the joke casually manga, which I, I think was way funnier in my head. Just because, you know, it's like it's not easy to make an alliteration for the manga. You can do like manga Mondays, you Monday. <laughs> Somebody said Monday manga. I was like, that's mean. <laughs> Mundane and casual don't have the same meaning. But for some reason, some people thought that I meant like I was starting another channel. I was like, my God, when do I have time for that? If I did start another channel, it would be to game because <laughs> I'm that kind of nerd. But I did, um, I picked up a couple of, I did pick up some manga because of course this, it had a really, I'm shaking the thing again. It had a really good selection of everything. Just uh, all of the things, like the kids section was big, the, the comic section was big, but the graphic novel section was big, which is what I care about. Also the new release section was pretty big, but it was kind of off into like its own section at the corner. And it was near like the memorabilia and the, the statues and those kind of things. And then the manga wall was pretty decent, but it wasn't overtaking everything. And then there had, of course, like the model wall and like the paints and the dragons. And my daughter wanted to grab a bunch of dye because they all have pretty colored dyes there. And she's like, we need dye. And I'm like, we don't. <laughs> we don't need any more dye. Put them down. <laughs> so I got some of the uh, Junji Ito stuff. I got Gyo and I already put Uzumaki on the shelf back there. So you already got a shelf spot and Gil will probably get a shelf spot as well. But I, uh, he, I've I already powered through that one because that one has the special um, extra chapter in it where the, uh, the one that didn't make it into the first draft. So I was very excited about that. <laughs> I, I'm happy to, <laughs> to talk about manga. Rusty Shackleford, thank you very much for the super chat. Oh, God, no, the poo can. <laughs> That's right. But we're not going to start with that, okay? We're going to ease into it. <laughs> we're easing into the... It's the kind of thing where it's like any of my whims. I'll... I'll talk about it when the when the mood strikes, whenever that is, and forever often that is, yes. Oh, uh, grumpy goat. <laughs> no, second channels have always been like a, a thing. They're uh, they're not, okay, I see you said it's chasing the algorithm. It's partially that, but it's also because you can't pivot your channel too hard. So like, for example, one of my other interests like um, is nail polish and makeup. Like I couldn't suddenly just be like, I couldn't suddenly make this a nail polish and makeup channel like that. You can't pivot the algorithm that hard. You would need to start a second one. So for example, like, the, the dream is gaming. Like I'd love to game, but you couldn't just pivot. Like that would be less of a pivot, but it would still be a pretty big pivot. So maybe one day, let me game for you. <laughs> so weird. Forced adversary. Thank you so much for the super chat. It is appreciated. Lash, let me get, should I get Uzumaki and move it over here? Is it worth it? I'll probably talk about that one first because there's something impressive about, you know, managing to make a spiral scary like that it really worked on a psychological and a like a visceral kind of physical body horror level even like at the end like some of it gets a little silly i will say but i think it brings it home at the very very ending after that but i'm just now i'm just i spiraled into because i don't want to start with the story one of my favorite stories it's a bit too niche which is the human chair Okay, so the human chair is Junji Ito's response to a Japanese stor short horror story by the same name. And it's like a sequel continuation to it. And I just, I hate it. And it, like, if you were to describe it to somebody, it sounds so silly, but it's, uh, it, I don't know, it's just, it's disturbing to me. It's one case, okay, so like there's a, there's a person like living inside of a chair. It's just one of those things, like, remember, if you ever see those videos where somebody puts a hidden camera in their house and it turns out that someone's like secretly living in their cupboards or like the whole parasite syndrome, like people are underneath your house, like scary, scary, scary stuff. Do not appreciate, do not want. The other thing I picked up oh, was, dun, 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 monster. It was a, it was a manga kind of, kind of day. I find it, I don't know, I find it easier to order the uh, the comics online, even the physical ones, because when I'm in the store and you can see the price comparisons right there of how much you're getting versus, because how much, how much were you, monster? I know, there's a note, like, this book reads right to left. I know, I'm looking for the price on it. Okay, here it is. Price was 26 
And just to compare, for $26, I would be getting like one of those Gotham City Sirens books. And I just, <laughs> no, not when I could have all this monster. <laughs> I like Monster a lot. Um, there are there are nine volumes of this, so I need to get all of them. But I like Monster, love the anime, love the manga. Want to have it on my shelf? So it is here. Mr. Another, thank you very much for the super chat. What about a wig channel? I am nowhere near good enough at like laying down the wigs for a wig channel. There are some amazing... I just watch wig channels sometimes. They're not even wigs that I would ever wear, but it's just so impressive watching people like tweeze them into perfection. It's very satisfying watching people create and then lay down their wigs. I'm really into it. Or just people who have like 80 of almost the same wig, she says, even though I may be one of those people. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Probably am. Let's be honest. I probably am. But yeah, it was a short visit because of course um where i am we still have the limits inside the stores so we didn't want to like bogart the store and <laughs> not let other people in but it was nice to to go around it's definitely a place that i'll go back to and uh they had a rewards program i was like yeah put me on the rewards program <laughs> let's not pretend give me give me, give me the rewards <laughs> so <laughs> inquise studios thank you very much for the super chat <laughs> it is much appreciated oh there are many many things coming, coming soon. Oh, so, you know, you ever have one of those days where just like all the ideas flow and they all make sense? <laughs> and it was one of those days. I, But of course, because I don't have a notebook, because why have a notebook when you can just write on the backs of letters and things and then pin them up? But I did buy post-its. Post-its happened. You know how I never have post-its for our uh, book clubs, which I'm posting the book club vote in the members either later tonight or tomorrow morning. But yeah, I have all the things. And there are interviews and just a, a bunch of stuff. Things have been being worked on behind the scenes. It's it's all happening. <laughs> it's busy and it's so hot. Why? Why is it hot like this? I'm going to drink from this cup and leave a lipstick stain on it. It's happening. <laughs> this is the second lipstick. The first lipstick I had on was a bright, a bright fluorescent orange. And admittedly, it was terrible. But because it was me, I was just going to go with it anyway. I was like, I don't even care. And then my husband saw me. He was like, we're vetoing that. He was like, no, this far, no further. So this is the uh, take two, take two uh, lipstick. <laughs> it is better in all fairness. It was, it was this color. And I was like, but it matches. But, you know, sometimes you can match too much. There's such a thing. When you turn to a Dr. Seuss character, you may have gone a bit too far. Just potentially. <laughs> it might have pivoted a bit too far. I fell down a, uh, I fell on a black, ra um, a black widow rabbit hole recently. And that was pretty interesting. You'll hear a, a little bit about that. It was not the deepest of rabbit holes. Of course, the eraser, who I actually have a very strong fondness for and kind of want to come back in a serious capacity. I am toying with the dumbest shirt idea of all time. And I kind of love it. Okay, it's like, it's, I'll tell you. Like D is for Dame. I think it's hilarious. Like C is for Cookie, but I'm like I feel like that's pretty niche. I feel like I'm getting inside my own head a little bit <laughs> with that one. <laughs> but it's okay. Sometimes you just need you just need to let the ideas flow, and they don't all actually need to make it to reality stage. But it made me laugh, and it's like my mom always used to tell me. You got to be able to laugh with yourself, which basically just means you need to be able to enjoy your own company because you're going to have to spend a lot of time with yourself. So you better have fun. Get ready to have fun. <laughs> have fun with yourself. It's important. <laughs> oh. I'm powering through this so fast. So, so fast. Oh, my goodness. Boo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo. I'm trying to think of anything like interesting and profound happened at the um, at the store. If it was just a very successful like went in, 
bought things left, which is pretty much what it was. There were some cool um, statues, but I can't get into the statue. Oh, they, they had some graded copies of Batman Damned up there. And I was so tempted to be a weirdo and be like, is that the, is that the uncensored? Is that the uncensored version? But I was like, don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> Just turn around and leave. <laughs> don't ask weird questions. Don't be that person. So the Batwoman statue was pretty cool. And they had ones from the animated series for like Supergirl and Batgirl. And those are pretty cool as well. But just to be admired from afar, because that is a whole other world. And once you open that door, that's a whole other level of things to collect. And there's already enough collecting happening <laughs> over here. Red Sonia. There was some Red Sonia stuff that happened. Uh, Red Sonia and Vampirella crossovers and a whole bunch of th things were red. Things were red and will eventually be talked about. It's going to happen. <laughs> I have to say, this is the first time I've worn these round glasses on the stream. And I really like them. I really like them. It has been, uh, it's been a while since I was able to get new glasses just because of all the lockdowns and everything. And I hadn't realized how bad my eyes had gotten until I put them on. I tried them on in the store and it was just, everything just sharpened. And I was like, wow, I did not realize it had gotten that bad. <laughs> I had no idea. You just get used to it. Your eyes adapt and you just like, oh, I guess everything always looked a little fuzzy and you didn't even, you don't even notice that it's fuzzy. And now I'm like, yes. I can see, <laughs> I can see clearly, I can see all the little details on the pages <laughs> that I'm reading, especially because I do so much digital online reading. So it's great, which I have to, you know, it's so funny. I waited and like I had my wish list, like Infinite Frontier, and then it came out and I have not even read it yet. I've been reading all of these other things and I haven't even gotten to Infinite Frontier as of yet. I need to, maybe I'll like hop in after it's a few issues in. It's just, you know, there is a lot of a lot always. And just another horror series got recommended to me, The Abattoir. And now I'm just like, well, I have to read that now and it's going to happen. I'm reading a couple of comics for the interviews that I'm going to do. And I'm very excited about those. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. Alvin the cat is crying at the bottom of the stairs because he wants to come up, but it's not his time. It's not his time right now. <laughs> He's too far down. He'll be too hot up here anyway. He comes up here and he's too hot and then he just lies on the floor. And it's, and it's sad. I don't want that for him. Oh. Do I have any tips for wig life? In what capacity? In what sense? Specify. <laughs> Elaborate. Tell me. Tell me more. I was this close to picking up a wig that was, okay, you know the Too Faced one that I wore the other day when I talked about the photo shoot that I did? There was one like that, only the colors were a platinum white and a like a red, like a red like Spidey back there. It was very much a, a Harley Quinn like kind of like suicide squatty look and it, it almost happened. It almost happened. <laughs> it may still happen. I don't know. The fact that I'm still thinking about it indicates that it may at some point happen. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It needs to be kept under control. <laughs> there are enough. The fact that it was a dilemma, which wig to pick for the photo shoot, which was so much fun. We had a great laugh at one point because we wanted to take some candids, but those faux candids where, you know, you're slightly posed, but you're supposed to look like it's so natural. But she got me to laugh for real because <laughs> she was like, laugh, you're laughing. You love life. And it just made me laugh so hard for real that we got some really great laughing pictures. <laughs> just, you love life is a great <laughs> just <laughs> instruction for somebody. Go, you love life. <laughs> oh, it was a lot of fun. And I'm super glad that I got to do it. And then I did it. And yeah, maybe at some point when um, more of the merch filters in, because I have a couple more items that I'm waiting for and then to launch, maybe I'll do a shoot with uh, with those. There's a random abandoned uh, rail ra railway and 
train by where I live. Just, just go pose on that for no reason. <laughs> So like these trains, these trains are like my comic. I don't know, <laughs> but it would, you know, it'll, it'll be a good time. Ah, <sighs> the heat. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It's more sauna esque. But what's really sad is one of my, one of my. Oh my god, I'm forgetting the soundproofing. Soundproofing over there. One of them is. It's melting off. It's so sad. I use the Gorilla Glue. It's supposed to be able to glue anything. It's supposed to keep it all down. It's it's failing me. Gorilla Glue. Why? I mean, the Gorilla Glue, when I was gluing the stuff, glued my fingertips together for a second. So I know you're strong. It just must be all the condensation. <laughs> oh. I'm still fighting the urge to go and pick up Uzumaki and show you the one gross panel where I knew that I was going to absolutely adore it. I'm a really big horror person. I like body horror, but when you marry it with a psychological element, not just gore for gore's sake, but something that really can inherently make your skin crawl. Do any of you have like really fun, fun, <laughs> like, but horror, like comics, manga, I don't care, that you that you like. I mean manga and comics differently, but I definitely don't feel that they need to have uh, separate channels. Like that's, oh, that would be so much more work. A whole other level. <laughs> A whole level. Mm. I wasn't even able to maintain two at the same time with this just because there's so many comics to to cover, which is exciting. It's it's exciting to know that you have more that you want to talk about. So I suppose I should ask, since you know comic book stores going in, what is everybody reading? What are what are people checking out? I saw Batman and Catwoman on the wall. I don't know, like the logo for some reason was really prominent. I was like, I was reading that. <laughs> right. I was reading that and I just kind of fell off, even though I fell off at the issue where I started to like it a lot more. That was weird. <laughs> that was a weird thing that happened. I was like, wow, this took a turn that I'm enjoying. Didn't buy the next issue. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I just cupped it and held it up like that. <laughs> that was very odd. Let me catch up with what some of you are saying. I did read some of Immortal Hulk. I fell off about um, midway, I think around issue 25, I fell off. I'll probably get back in when it's done. I think it's done or it's almost done at this point because they're wrapping up at 50. But I, it's one of those things where I really liked elements of it and other parts I I didn't, but the the art and like the grotesqueness of the transformation and stuff, I was really into and I really liked that. So <laughs> the Hulk is my dad's favorite hero. So I always kind of keep tabs just so I can let him know what's happening with the Hulk. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see, catching up, catching up, catching up. Oh, it's, it's done in two months. Oh, it takes a long time because everything comes out so spaced out like that. And I'm, I'm just looking at it the entire time. I'm just like, look, it's over there. I'm gonna pick it up. Who am I kidding? Ugh. Who am I kidding? It was gonna happen. We all knew it was happening. Where is the image that I really like that I definitely am gonna make sure is in the video? They're doing a series too. It's so funny. They dropped a trailer for it where it's mostly just the anime director talking about it. And then he's like, I'm going to show you a snippet. And it's 10 seconds. I was like, I'm, who am I gonna kill? I'm, I'm hyped for this 10 seconds. <laughs> it's just a spiral. <sighs> Here it is. This is the page where I knew. So like she goes over this guy's house to deliver a thing and he's like, I don't need it anymore. And look at what I can do. And look at that. Just disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I loved it. From there, I was like, I know that I'm just going to read this 
all the way through, just all the way through. <laughs> And that's pretty much what happened with a, a couple of breaks when my uh, children woke up and I had to hide it from them. But my daughter is getting very interested in um, monsters. She draws them all the time now. And she's at that age where uh, they, they make up stories and she makes up stories about uh, monsters all the time. <laughs> Would you like to hear a, uh, a Hugo a nominated story, <laughs> which is there was a monster. He had a rainbow body. He had white arms and brown feet and he was walking through the forest and then he got dead because a Godzilla stepped on him. My daughter, 2021. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like approved. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I love the, uh, I love the initiative. <laughs> uh, no, I love, I love stuff like that. I, oh, nobody here cares, but I want to wrap up Harley Quinn, Black, White, and Red, just because we started. I also uh, finished off the first half of Black Cat, and I'm like, the completionist in me wants to just wrap those up, even though I know, especially for Harley Quinn, because everybody's so oversaturated with her. They pumped her out way too much just like Deadpool remember those few years when Deadpool was everywhere and you couldn't turn around without Deadpool somehow popping up and having a series and now it's very much like mm. <laughs> no more leave it alone <sighs> yeah Harley exhaustion <laughs> exactly oh <sighs> there was a whole like uh there was a Batgirl thread the other day that I read about like Batgirl in the New 52 that Gail Simone wrote. So that was interesting. Now I have notes if I ever talk about Batgirl again, which I undoubtedly will. See, that's why it's important to say at the time of this recording. Somebody asked me the other day, do you say that because you said something and it aged incredibly poorly? Like the next day, it was just horribly out of date. And the answer is no, that's not what it is. What it is, is that it'll be years or months or something. And something about a character will change because characters are always changing or somebody will come back or something like that. And then there'll be th this long comment, but it's not, it's not just like they came back. It's like, oh, you clearly don't read because they, blah, 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 blah. but really it's because the time cut, like the, the date wasn't checked. And I'm like, that's why I always say at the time of this recording, it's a, it's a hint that you need to look at the date. <laughs> And now it's just something that rolls off the tongue. One of those things you say so often, it just becomes part of your vocabulary, part of, part of the makeup of everything that you say. It's happened. Let's let's make Dame happen like that. Then I can make my D is for Dame shirt and it'll make sense. <laughs> mm. I guess I'm afraid it's going to fall over. Maybe that's why I keep propping it up like that. <laughs> <laughs> let's see catching up catching yes hi to all the people who are just popping in i know this is completely completely unplanned <laughs> and very random and stream of consciousness and slightly halted because i'm melting <laughs> but that's a good thing <laughs> hmm bought a bunch of games lately because they were on sale like there's part of me that one of the games I had a lot of fun with was the telltale Batman games and part of me was all is always so tempted to play it again and do a stream just called ruining Bruce Wayne's life because that's the way that I play <laughs> every choice I make just makes his life worse and everything's like that person's gonna remember that Harvey's gonna remember that and I'm like well <laughs> it's not going well is it <laughs> How it started, Bruce Wayne having a happy life. How it ended, Bruce Wayne dead. <laughs> uh, if that was an option, like it was one of those choose your own adventure stories where half the options led to you dying, that is that is what would happen. I love the Telltale games so much. That that type of game is is very, very fun for me. What are we all keeping up with? Like what, what is an ongoing, are you off the, are you off the wagon? Is it, is it too much? What event did you enjoy recently? I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even, I didn't read most of Heroes Reborn. I'll catch up on it later. I'm currently not reading Infinite Frontier. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. 
Nick Barucci, thank you very much for the super chat. Hey, Sasha, some support and thanks for your friends at Dynamite. Love the positivity. Thank you so much. And thank you for the uh, the Red Sonia. I have a bunch of Red Sonia things that I'm planning on talking about. It's a decision between which series to crossover series to talk about first, because you know that I love the crossover. So I read Red Sonia and Vampirella, but I also read simultaneously because there was a Vampirella crossover sale. And that's how all of these crossovers happened. Well, <laughs> to be in my cart with the Vampirella, Red Sonia, Betty and Veronica. And I'm leaning towards that because it's just, it's so much. It's like you get double the crossover. <laughs> You get double the crossover for the price of one. And I love the Archie crossovers. They're also random and they're they're better than you would expect. Like people make fun of Archie and the Predator, but you know what? Or Archie meets the Punisher. And both of those make more sense than you would expect them to. <laughs> they both do. The surprisingly, well, I guess it fits in with what I just said, but the Red Sonia, Vampirella, Benny Veronica one also makes a lot of sense. It makes more sense than the Red Sonia and Vampirella one, which ends up being a bit confused in all honesty, but we will get to it when we talk about it because there is just, I have a, I actually have a spreadsheet that's full of ideas and stuff that I'm going to do. And then also it has release dates of things coming up. So like you can kind of pretend to follow the SEO in any way. <laughs> and, and then I just kind of go down and like, green them as I, as I go to make myself feel like I have some kind of order or, or structure in life. <laughs> like it's like, it's all actually organized and not just, Ooh, I'm reading that. Ooh, I'm enjoying that, which is really more what it is than anything else. But yes, yes, indeed. Plenty of things, plenty of things. The horror that is spreadsheets. Hey, organization is is good <laughs> oh i need to watch the long halloween part one i think that came out and i like the long halloween a lot but some of the animated uh adaptations recently have made just changes for changes sake so uh, you gotta you gotta brace yourself because <laughs> like mm, what am i gonna be reading i don't know <laughs> i don't know just steal yourself Oh, that is something that I read that reminded me because it slipped right out of my brain because it was actually a little boring, which was the, uh, there was the life story of Spider-Man that came out, which was where they condensed all of Spider-Man's like history into one timeline and then went through it decade by decade. And I really liked that one. So I read the Fantastic Four one and it was essentially just the Fantastic Four. It wasn't, it didn't add as much to it so far. I found as Spider-Man's did, but we'll see. You know, I'm here secretly simping for the Fantastic Four. There was part of me that it would age so poorly because you know that any slang where it's going to fall out of favor at some point, but <laughs> part of me was like, I wish I had a podcast called Simping for Superman. <laughs> I'm um, like the joke would die and then I'd have this podcast because I'd be that person who it's like, let's go to issue 100 from this round. <laughs> Ben Chen, thank you very much for the super chat. Love how you love how you love how much of a mess Hal Jordan is. Yes, big disaster energy from Hal. And I love how <laughs> Green Lantern Star Trek and Green Lantern Planet of the Apes were fun crossovers. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. I also like um, Green Lanterns and Space Ghost from Coast to Coast, <laughs> which, which was also a fun one. I wish that they would just let Hal be a complete disaster. I hate when they take him back to like, he's so cool and suave. I'm like, no, a mess of a man. Let this be a mess of a man and we can have some of the other people be suave. D John, John's got his stuff together. Let him be together. <laughs> you have so many lanterns to choose from. I am really enjoying Green Lantern. Really enjoying Green Lantern so far. Like, I just, I love Green Lantern. <laughs> It's funny because it's one of those characters when I first started reading comics, it was like, what? So he's got a ring and then ended up really, you know, you never know. That's why you can't judge. You can't judge a, a power by its cover. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Joffrey, heat wave. Yeah, me too. It's absolutely like, look at the shine. The shine is not highlighter. <laughs> I'm glistening. Ooh, <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Does anybody else remember that Kim Possible episode where she, um, or Bonnie talks to her boyfriend? She's like, I love it when you glisten. It's like, whoa, <laughs> no. 
Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. My editor enjoyed the first issue of Fantastic Four Life Story. I see so many problems with the series and we'll be doing an article on it in the future. <laughs> give us a give us a sneak peek. Give us some notes from the article. Comic Toby420, welcome to the fanboy stud level. You are a fanboy stud. That's right. Just like Randy, who invented the black costume, <laughs> which we all appreciate very, very much. We are Fergie. Thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you for being such a joy to watch. Thank you for watching me and letting me not just be a person who screams into the abyss. Because you know what happens when you scream into the abyss too long? You think of stuff like this. That's what happens to you. <laughs> That's what happens when you look there too long. Don't let me be writing stories about human chairs and, and whatnot. It'll happen. <laughs> we'll all go to a dark place. I don't think we want to go there. Maybe we do. I don't know. I don't I don't want to go there. I'll let other people <laughs> go there to the to the true depths. Let's see. Oh Kyle. No, I like Kyle. I, I do have a fondness for Kyle. I at some point, like I don't know, I went through a phase where I was really reading a lot of Kyle, but like with everything, it's just like flitting in and out. Which is why I describe comics, at least for me personally, as a journey, because I always find that I'm going from place to place or picking up new knowledge or just ideas along the way. So that's very much how I look at it. Like it's not it's not complete. There's always something new to learn, something new to check out. That's what keeps it so exciting and fresh. And it's very exciting, I think, to be in a hobby for so long and still learn something new. Sometimes people say things like, oh, everybody who cares like knows that. And I'm like, that's not entirely, I don't think that's a fair or, or true statement, really. Everybody finds and discovers things at, at different times, even if they are super into something. Sometimes you're just late to the boat, train, whatever vehicle it is. Mr. Another, thank you very much. Would you watch a Hal Jordan Ollie Queen movie? Oh, would they make it like hard traveling heroes? <laughs> it's just Ollie screaming at Hal the entire time and a bunch of social commentary that's aged incredibly poorly. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch it. <laughs> I'd watch it for sure. <laughs> Where is it? Who, who's green lighting? <laughs> Who are we casting? Hey, fan cast. Fan cast your Hal and your Ollie. Tell me, tell me who you would cast because I'm kind of out of um, out of the loop with who uh, who's hip with the kids. <laughs> I know a little bit because of the TikTok, but I was so happy. I heard a uh, a bunch of songs and I liked them, and then they were all on the charts. And then I got the album, and then she's like the new it girl for the kids. And I'm like, I'm not old. Yes. <laughs> mm. I'm not old. <laughs> oh, well, Nathan Fillion did the voice acting for that Green Lantern movie. Both of them, I think. Also Emerald Knights. Yeah. I like the Green Lantern animated movie a lot. And it, it manages to cram a bunch of stuff in, even though it really crams the whole Sinestro and him stuff in really fast. The Sinestro and his connection is really a more modern update. I'm not sure many people realize that. They had a much more simplified relationship back in the day, but I do enjoy that they really hammer home the the betrayal aspect of it now. I think that that works. It's, it adds, you know, Hal needs some non-cringe layers. So. <laughs> oh, I see that there's a, there's a consensus. <laughs> there's a consensus about who we're casting for Hal. What about Ollie? No one's even casting Ollie. You know what? Appropriate. <laughs> Appropriate. Oh. Mm. There's a bunch of um I've read a bunch of like Lois and Jimmy, but I've like been keeping it to myself. I even scripted a couple, but I was like, you need to you need to keep it, keep it inside. Save it. Save it for when the just when the people when he was needed, he returned. <laughs> Jimmy Olsen, you know, all of that stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Project Marvel said Ollie can be someone's left toe. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we can just cast Stephen Allmill. That's so mean. <laughs> oh, not nice. <laughs> 
We are Fergie. Welcome to the fanboy stud level. It's a good time to join that level because there is going to be a vote. And when you vote, you help shape what we talk about on the live. And also when I do film behind the scenes stuff, I put it there. And there's probably one happening soon because there is a very questionable wig that I purchased that may never see the light of day that I may show to some of you. It Okay, so let me tell you the story. What had happened was there was a sale and, and it went down 70% off. And I was so excited that I put it in and I did not double check the color. And so the color came and the colors were wrong. They are not the, uh, the correct colors that were desired. And uh, now I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have it and sending it back is too much of a hassle. So I, uh, if, if, you'll see. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. The moral of the story is don't get too excited because things are on sale. That's how you end up with wigs that are the wrong color or buying like eight Vampirella crossovers. Because <laughs> you're just real excited. <sighs> well, I don't know why this entire stream I've been clutching this bottle so bizarrely <laughs> and it needs to stop. Oh, that was one other thing that happened on the trip to the comic book store. My daughter picked up a plushie of her uh, desire, which was she picked up the Miles Morales Spider-Man. He's downstairs. He doesn't get to live with the others. He has to live in her room. She was just really excited. She loves that costume. She saw like the preview for Into the Spider-Verse, and she just thinks that's the, the best, coolest Spider-Man costume. So when she saw it, there was a plushie that looked like that. She was like, ah, Spider-Man, the black, red Spider-Man. <laughs> she just got so hype, and she she held that little Spider-Man all the way home, and we walked, too. So she just walked the entire way, clutching little Spidey, and it was so sweet. Spidey has not left the side. Spidey travels in the car. Spidey sleeps in the bed. Spidey's everywhere. It's really, really sweet. <laughs> Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. The article will talk about the Fantastic Four's divergence from the premise established by Spidey Life Story. Also, Doom is miscarried. Yeah, Doom. <laughs> Doom is not what was going on in that story. <laughs> That's very fair. Meow Nan, Meow Nian, Meow Nian, thank you very much. If you could make a group composed entirely of 90s DC heroes, who'd be on the team? Hell mode, no legacy heroes. I'm not sure. I am too hot to think cohesively, coherently, wow, about who exactly is Thunderstrike. <laughs> Even though he's not DC, it's, it's like, you know who's from the 90s? Thunderstrike. I used to like Thunderstrike, Eric Masterson. It was okay. That Thor, that Thor time is pretty fun. <laughs> Who would you pick for your entirely 90s DC roster? No legacy characters. Mm. That's, I know I'm just talking about my daughter a lot, but she's, you know, it's all about the kids, at least for me. And she was up here and she picked up my Nightfall volumes. And she picked up the second one. So that's the one where Jean-Paul Valley is Batman. And she looked at it with his big costume, you know, with the pouches and everything. And he has a thing where he has a leg holster, but only half a belt. And so she went, why is part of his belt on his leg? And then she stared at him for a long time and went, we have to put this back. This is the wrong Batman. <laughs> and went and got another Batman going. <laughs> I was like, oh, brutal. <laughs> but it made me smile. And she went and picked a, a different one because that was the wrong Batman. <laughs> Jean Pelval is crying. Uh. <laughs> mm. Characters from Bloodlines. The 90s was was an interesting time. It's it doesn't have some of some of the art in the 90s is is difficult for me. Very chaotic and frenetic. Sometimes difficult to follow or very I was reading that wasn't actually it wasn't the 90s, but I was reading a bunch of scarecrow stories because I went down that scarecrow rabbit hole and I was deciding what angle of the scarecrow I wanted to talk about. And I read the um 
Doug Mensch stuff. And the art by uh, Kelly Jones in that is very stylized. It's almost it's almost got like a German expressionist vibe in how angular and out of proportion some things were. And it was just very interesting to read. It's one of those things where I'm not sure how much I enjoyed it, but it was interesting to uh, to look at. That's for sure. That story, though, was like the scarecrow. Oh, people bullied me. So take that. It's, you can do so much more with the scarecrow. Someone um, commented, which is true, even though I didn't say that it was the first use of scare gas, fear gas in comics, but it was the first time the scarecrow used it. But someone misconstrued that and thought I was saying that was the first use of fear gas, but it's not because that's in the 40s by Hugo Strange, who's a much older villain than a lot of people think. And I feel like there's been a bit of overlap with Strange and Crane, where sometimes people in the modern era have a hard time differentiate, differentiating the focus they should have, which is a bit of a shame for Hugo Strange, because there's a lot of potential with with Strange, I think, just like there is with Crane. And I think you can work them both differently. I, I really like Hugo Strange a lot. I think he's pretty underrated. But he's actually the first person to use uh, Fear Gas. Well, he doesn't use it. He gives it to his hench his henches to use it's like here you go <laughs> you do it over there <laughs> there are some and there's some weird strange stories there's a one of my favorite ones is actually it's a during the silver saint cloud time and it's around the period where they adapted part of this for the animated series where there was the auction to see if they could auction off batman's secret identity and strange ends up dying and coming back to haunt Rupert Thorne as a ghost and ghost Hugo Strange. Ghost Hugo Strange is one of my favorite things ever. Ghost Hugo Strange appearing in the middle of the road to choke <laughs> to choke him out as he's driving a car is great. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Another, thank you very much. Can you do a blue can you do a video on blue energy superman from the 90s? I actually already have. I just have not edited and posted it but it's actually already filmed i filmed that and a response to some people who were talking about what was the first uh imaginary story when we did the superman red and blue story and about how it was supposed to be like superman's happy ending and how that was super odd for the time and i found a bunch of information to show that like it it wasn't and based on like when that was situated in the what ifs but again i just haven't had a chance to edit it but it was really interesting <laughs> It's funny because some of the salt that I had for that one has definitely faded because it's been months, but I have electric blue Superman already like at some point, at some point I'll get there. Like the elongated man one I had for months sitting in the back end. And then finally I was like, today's the day, today's the day for Ralph. So it'll happen. Comic Toby 420. Would a scarecrow really work to keep birds away? They do. They do. They work quite well. <laughs> they work quite well. They're ancient. Since agriculture, we've had scarecrows, which was a funny comment that someone made on the Marvel scarecrow video, which was they said he was the ultimate fail because he didn't scare crows. He attracted them. <laughs> I was like, that is that is very true. That is very, very true. He had trained crows. That's the opposite of making crows go away. <laughs> it's like he's just really not doing it, is he? <laughs> That is, that scarecrow feels very much like, let's make a scarecrow. And then he's just around. Someone was kind enough to catalog all of like 78 of his appearances. So I could just go down and look at them. Someone wants a um, a bunch like to do like all of the characters who share a name, but it's more than you'd think. Like the reason the Enchantress came up was because of the uh, the Loki TV series because it kind of thrusts uh, like the Enchantress theories and stuff into the four. And I secretly like Thor uh, a lot. So <laughs> it's again, one of those comics that I really like. I have most of the Simonson run down there, which is really the era that I enjoy Thor from like post the, post the 60s and like the 80s when it gets really like Norse lore heavy and you get some of like the Lorelei stuff. I like Lorelei a lot. So oh, 
Oh. There we go. Look, it's sticking. Don't know why did I point that out. Oh my gosh, the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. No. Oh. What are some comics that you enjoy, but like maybe people don't know because you don't have a chance to talk about them? Or do you not get the chance to talk about comics? How how prominently do you get to discuss this kind of stuff in uh, in your day to day? I'm fortunate because of all of you that I get to talk about it a lot more to people who are who are interested and who care and who don't look at me like I have several heads. <laughs> Which I kind of do because of all the different wigs, but there you go. This is uh, this is a favorite, uh, by the way. It started off just as one I'd pop out, but I actually absolutely love it. Someone described it as danger hair, which I don't agree with, but I love it. <laughs> Let's see. I like Fable too. I like Fable a lot. I have a bunch of Fable volumes back there. And of course now they, I only have a couple left to go and now they're releasing omnibuses. So I'm like, great, I'm gonna have to go to back alley and like get these remaining volumes from people. <sighs> That's fun. like, Christine, I see your comment. I just, I, you know, I've never talked to the um, comic book store people. Maybe that might change now that this one seems so friendly that I might. It was so nice, okay? Like, it was well lit. It was super clean. It was well spaced. It was well organized. They had a research computer right at the front where you could just ask. You asked and people knew what you were talking about and there was no judgment no matter what you were asking for. There was no assumptions about, like, were you getting it for somebody else or anything? Like, it was... It was a good time. I was it just had a nice atmosphere. Some places just have a vibe and energy. I know that sounds really like hokey to some people, but it's true. Sometimes you go into a space and you can just feel like this is this is a good space. Just like sometimes you go into a space and it just feels really oppressive and you know, just bad. <laughs> You're like, now I need to leave. <laughs> Let me out. I'll never forget there was one comic book store when I was a kid and I was kind of starting to get curious like about it and I could never go there because it was literally a basement <laughs> it was a basement it was like there was a store and then there were just these steps beside it that descended down into the depths that was like I don't want to die today <laughs> no thank you it was the same once I had this uh, job interview for an editing gig and it just it just had weird vibes which was for one thing they replied by email that's normal but there was no phone number and then when I looked up the place it was right next to a cemetery I did not go to that job interview <laughs> I know those sound like little things but they gave bad vibes and sometimes you've just got to listen to your gut you got to listen to it. Don't, don't push it aside and be like, Oh, it's fine. No, if you get a really like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> listen to the vestige feelings. <laughs> Advice 2021. Booster Gosh. I love your name. <laughs> Richard Donner just passed away. So I'm putting you on the spot. Who's the better Superman, Henry Cavill or Christopher Reeve? Well, RIP. That's very sad news. I'm sad to hear that. So rest in peace. I think and I'm not copping out, but I genuinely believe this. I think that all the portrayals of Superman have something worthwhile in them or something that you can take from them that is relevant to the period they are coming from. And for that reason, I find all of them fascinating. I can get something out of George Reeves, Christopher Reeve, out of the animated ones like Tim Daly, out of Henry Cavill. Just there's something interesting about all of them. I wouldn't have minded seeing more of uh, of Cavill, actually, because I think he had a lot more range to offer to the role than he was given the chance to do. But you know, we'll we'll you know who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen with uh, future portrayals and and the like. I I like Superman. I like checking out the different versions that are put out there. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nicolas Cage. Did you know? I see you, Nicolas Cage. Okay. You know, Nicolas Cage actually, okay. I know some people are like, Teen Titans Go. I will, I love Teen Titans Go. I got really sassy there for a minute. I was like, fight me. But um, in the Teen Titans Go of the movies movie, Superman is voiced by Nicolas Cage, which I thought was a really nice touch. There were lots of little cute jokes in that movie. And that was one that I very much enjoyed. I was like, yeah, Nicolas Cage, because he loves Superman. That movie came so close to happening. <laughs> so, so close. Oh. Brandon Routh wasn't bad, actually. Like the, the movie around him, I feel like, was pretty rough. I was so happy when he got to come back to the superhero genre <laughs> through the Arrowverse. I was really glad to see him. <laughs> like, he returns. <laughs> yes, Superman returns as the Atom. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just catching up with the side chat. Do, 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 oh, what is, I guess, what is everybody's favorite, like, adaptation that they've, that they've seen, that they, that's kind of like their go-to, like, fun, just, you know, I don't know, you know, you know, if you've been here a while that I have a complicated relationship with adaptations where I like them and find them fascinating, but feel that they pull focus, <laughs> more focus than they, um, than they should. And that it puts comics back into a place that it's often occupied, which is being looked down upon by the other mediums as, you know, like lesser than or unnecessary or needing to be uh, bolstered up by others. Tubes the one. Thank you very much. Have you checked out static number one? I have not. I have not yet. And I like static, but I have not. It's like, it's, it's one of those things that's on like, okay. I, I wish list things on comiXology. I have this ridiculous wish list that at this point, it's not even realistic. <laughs> It's not even realistic anymore. I'm not sure if I'm like wish listing things w that I can even get to all the things on the wish list at this point because it's just like, oh, that looks nice wish list. <laughs> but it's on there. So who knows? I can I can predict nothing. <laughs> I go, I go where I I go where I'm needed. <laughs> I go where I feel like. Oh. I totally forgot Sin City happened. <laughs> I loved Sin City back in the day when I was edgy. <laughs> now I'm about as edgy as a circle. So I'm looking at all these adaptations and I actually watched the Spider, the Raimi Spider-Man, the first one the other day. And that one really holds up in my opinion. I love Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. People are just going about their business living life they can probably hear me going on under there <laughs> oh circles are all edge <laughs> oh fair very true <laughs> oh are there any adaptations that you're really looking forward to. I have to admit, I'm a bit, maybe it's just because I'm so busy, but I don't have the, that desire as much to, I don't feel the need to watch them instantly when they come out. Like I'll catch up when I catch up. It's kind of like my attitude of otherwise it just, I feel, I've said this before, but I feel like it takes some of the fun out of it when you feel like compelled, like compelled or rushed to keep up because it's more like you're doing it because you need to be part of the initial zeitgeist and less that you're doing it because you genuinely want to and getting to absorb it at your own pace. So I'm very much now like, well, when I get to it, I'll get to it. If I get to it, who knows? Years from now, it doesn't matter. I'm watching a bunch of K-dramas and I'm really enjoying them. Beyond Evil, 100% recommend. <laughs> it's so good. Sometimes you just need to do something and watch something completely different because why not? <laughs> the options are there. Take, take up on, take them up. Phrasing. <laughs> Phrasing. That's what happens when your brain melts. It's so Raiders of the Lost Ark up here. <laughs> right before I end, it's just all gonna come off like wax. <laughs> but, <laughs> what is that? 
that's pieces of the chair. Wow. That's pieces of my chair where my arm was resting. That's how hot it is. <laughs> it's fine. I am the dog in the, in the room where it's on fire right now. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know it is yuck. <laughs> Or yucky, as I hear all the time. <laughs> ha -ba -da -ba -da. Alex, you have spotted the tragedy of the attic. You see this, this beautiful piece with the um, man from Uncle Box set on top of it. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. That is the result of a um, a failed experiment by the people who lived here before me. And we're trying to turn it into a, a slum set of housing for housing more students than was legally capable to, to get AC up here so that you could put somebody else up here. And it does not work. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. It's just, it's just there. At some point I may remove it or I might gussy it up and, and do something with it. I have a fan. There is a, a fan that's over there. My dad, okay, my dad discovered like all these weird online ads and he bought me like a little portable one that he assumed you just had to add water to and it magically cooled your room down, but really you have to plug it in with a USB and it's not that effective, but I really appreciate it, dad, because I know you watch sometimes. I really appreciate it. It's really appreciated. It just does not, it does not cool the room as much as is necessary but I very much appreciate the thought. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to show up my house, but give it back. <laughs> if you don't want it, then I'll take it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a practical illusion. <laughs> it's just there to mess with people. That'd be great. Just bring people up here and pretend that it works. Like what? Are you hot? What are you talking about? There's no <laughs> I think they'd notice when they see the, the sound panel coming off the wall. <laughs> Be like, what? No. <laughs> oh. Now, what I mostly do uh, these days to combat when it's really hot is I film early in the morning or I film at night. Basically, it's a it's you film whenever the kids are asleep. And so it's early in the morning or at night. Those are the two times. I prefer the morning because then you get you know the golden hour the magical golden filming light but at night you get consistent lighting even though it brings out my yellow undertone but I don't mind that at all I I love the color of this room and creepily enough I sent a picture of it to my brother and then he had painted a room almost exactly the same color and I was like stop it <laughs> like we need, stop it we need to stop being the same person it's DJ thank you very much for the super chat I had regrets the other day because I was looking for a specific issue of um, the, a manga that I remembered reading. Then I realized it was an issue of Shonen Jump that I'd given him all of my Shonen Jumps. And I was like, ah, I would, it was a gift given. And it cannot be returned. And I know he likes them. But yeah, when I went to university, I gave him a bunch of stuff. He got the Shonen Jumps. He got the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And he got the Magic cards. So <laughs> appreciate them. <laughs> oh. Let's see. That's the most Ontario housing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, the house, is, this house is old, which I like about it, but it means that a lot of it had to be replaced. It's 108 years old, so a bunch of it had to be redone. There were galvanized pipes and the, the, the electricity was um, knob and tube, which had to be replaced, but it's, it's got good bones. And it's got good energy. And this is going to sound so like, I know, like, whatever, but it has good energy. You can tell people we're happy here. And I know that sounds incredibly <laughs> sappy, but it just, it brings, it brings happiness. And I think we're adding to the, the happiness tapestry and energy of the, of the house. So <laughs> happy house. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not 108 isn't that old. I mean, there are some buildings that have stood for much longer. Good, it's haunted by good energy and good vibes. <laughs> That's what it's haunted by good vibrations, there, dare I say. Oh. 
But yes, I think I have to go because I am melting. I'm going to go down. I'm going to edit some stuff, do some stuff, drink a bunch of water and <laughs> catch up with all of you soon with a new video and new posts, new things, new streams, all of that stuff. Thank you so much for hanging out, for catching up, for chit-chatting, for letting me very briefly showcase my haul because I never talk about the things in the title as long as I feel like I should. But, well, I will see you all again soon. <laughs> but, bye-bye.